If I were to say the word hoarder, you'd probably think of like those reality TV shows where there's a bunch of boxes everywhere and there's junk strewn all over the place and there's like bugs and rotting food and everything's just gross. Hey Linus. Well, Brian the electrician, he's always been a little different, but he's also a different kind of hoarder. So take a step inside Brian's domicile here where we're gonna see exactly what a tech hoarder looks like. The LG Ultra Wide Festival for 2019 has begun. This year's concept is superheroes and I'm apparently one of them. Learn more at the link below for your chance to win an ultra wide monitor and other great prizes from LG. So everything looks pretty normal so far. You know, family pictures on the walls. Got China cabinet. Perfectly normal, you know, dishes and stuff. So, I mean, this is all pretty normal. You got your Xbox, your computer. I mean, wow, haven't seen one of those in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the, the keyboard attached to Xbox 360 controller. Couple controllers, there's a random mouse. Okay, there's, <laughs> this seems like it might become a bit of a recurring theme. This is not plugged into anything. It's just there. It's just there. Well, I know why it's there. It's there yeah. in case, you know, someone loses track of the wireless one or the battery dies. You just have an emergency mouse just yeah. within arm's reach at all times. Now that is a sign of a true tech order. You've got an AC adapter that isn't plugged into anything. An ethernet cable that isn't plugged into anything. Oh no, I knew it. An IO shield. <laughs> You'd never know what room we're in if I didn't tell you. But this is in fact- The kitchen. The kitchen. So we've got ourselves uh, not one, not two, but three computers. Yeah. And I'm told that these two are um, just a, a modern machine for recipes and cooking. Couldn't use a tablet for that. Uh, and a little Minecraft. Okay, machine number, a little bit of kitchen Minecraft. <laughs> uh, number two is an old Windows XP machine for retro games, which yeah. naturally you would play here in the kitchen. Well, you know, just if uh, I can't make it down to the basement. These are a classic. Oh yeah. These are beautiful. You have a non-plugged in D-Link <laughs> access point. Third computer, not plugged into anything. Oh, look at this relic. It has a serial port. Wait, it also has a display port port. Oh my goodness, there is so much dust in that DP port. That looks like it has never been used. Probably not. Yeah, we're gonna head downstairs, but Brandon, you just about tripped over another computer right there. Wait, well, hold on a second. Why is this one here? It's gonna go downstairs. It's gonna go downstairs. You know what? Well, look, Brian, we're here to help. All right, here we go. We're descending. You never know when you're gonna need 300 feet of ethernet cable. Oh my goodness. What the hell is this? This is very early LCD technology. I feel like a tech archeologist. Like what is this, 2005? Property of Blessings Christian Marketplace. Oh, that's uh, from Michelle's Two old work. Manufactured January 2004. Yeah, I would accuse you of stealing it, but I'm sure they didn't want it anymore. <laughs> and that was 10 years ago. Oh my goodness. Is this a PCMCIA card? Yes, it is. I love that they called 10100 fast ethernet because that is not fast. Okay, I could give you a pass on the extra mouse in the living room, but this yeah. is three mice and three keyboards on a utility sink. Yeah, to be cleaned. To be cleaned. Okay, this is a three button mouse with no scroll wheel. Yeah. The best way to clean that is in a melting vat so they can reuse the plastics to make something modern and useful. Is that an iPad 1? Oh my goodness, I forgot how chonky this thing was. Look how thick this thing is. And I actually thought we were done in this corner. I was looking under the desk. I was like, okay, you got your racing back. What is this? Why is there a CD drive down there? It's there, no, there's no good reason. You may you may stop actually, explaining. There is. It's to keep the pedals from moving back when I'm playing the. To keep the, the pedals from moving back. Yeah, the pedal bumps against the drive. You're it literally works using it as a doorstop. Yes. 
Is that a CD changer? Why? Don't you have Spotify, sir? Actually, I'm just using that as an amp. All right, now we're into what is very obviously the wifey PC. So uh, I couldn't help noticing that she doesn't yeah. have nearly as good a rig as you. I saw that uh, Minecraft is struggling a little bit there. What's your excuse, sir? My excuse you're is You're gonna that have this much tech and you're not gonna have her Minecraft running at 100 plus FPS. That's the intern PC. I have another one in the workshop that I've built for her. We're gonna see if that story checks out. At least she's got a laptop. Been a bit of an older model, tough book. Yeah, second gen i5. Oh, it doesn't even have a USB 3, dude. Yeah, it's a tough book. Doesn't need USB 3 to be cool. What do you think, guys? Do I look cool? If I do, it's not the laptop. LTTstore.com, anyway. This is a second home theater PC. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a TV in the basement, but come on, man. More yeah. than one home theater PC, also. An old amp. Also, Two one amp, amp is not a problem. Two amps is a problem. This one's not hooked up. And this one is not hooked up. Not yet. They, what is this? Oh my goodness. A la I had a LaserJet 6P. Still works. 10 years ago, and it was used. You guys may not know, this is a gravity-fed model laser printer, which means that the print reliability, while the text is very crisp, the toner cartridge in this, uh -huh. I got filled back when I was in high school for $40 and it's still on the same fill. Right, but that's because you're not actually using it. Not right now. I used it for a lot of years. Still going. So I'm going to have to knock a few more points off for these speakers that are next to a TV but not actually hooked up. And not then... yet. <laughs> and now it's time for the workshop. Now, yeah. so far this has been, I'd say, a moderate case of tech hoarding, but my understanding, based on all the things Brian claims to be working on all the time, is that there's definitely another level that we can ratchet up to here. You'll see. Ow. Ah, ha, 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 very funny, Justine. Oh my goodness. Oh man, okay. Where do we even start here? What do you have a box machine for? That is the Minecraft server. And does this Minecraft server actually serve to anyone outside of this house? Yes. Oh, it does? Okay, yep. so you're running your own Minecraft server. Yep. Out of this, by the way, very nice, love it, wooden server cabinet. Just as long as you don't have a fire, everything's fine. Uh, the top one is storage. All right, how much storage is in here? Right now, three terabytes. You have an entire 4U for three terabytes of storage? Uh, it's also redundant. All the drives are in RAID 1. Holy smoke. So do you just like rock out in here? What is this What is this amplifier you got going on here? I need better speakers to go with it. I'll say that right now. But that's a 500 watt two channel Rotel. So there are already some fascinating relics in here. This AIO has got to be at least 15 years old. That is a first gen i3. That's a machine Michelle was using. I just need to make sure there's no pictures on it before it goes to recycling. More wrapping paper, very funny. I couldn't help noticing that there was an entire list of uh, software serial keys. Some of it useful, some of it probably less useful. PC Cillin Internet Security 2008. I remember that, that's a classic. That's when I started that database. Sims 2, wow, you own the entire Sims 2 series. And you solemnly swear every single one of these keys is legit? Yes. All right, I might hit you up for some, no, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Windows 95, Windows 98, and 98 SE. Okay, now this is something I think we can all agree can just be thrown away. So, so you work with an electronics recycler, but to do what? To just hoard more? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I rescue machines I find interesting that I actually have an interest in as well as any stuff that I don't have room for or I've lost interest in or that doesn't work, I just, I, I'm able to bring it back and get rid of it. Got it, got it. The motherboard on the wall behind this screen, Yeah. that was my first machine. Really? That board was in a computer that my dad bought new in 95. Wow. And then when he got a machine to replace that, yeah. it was handed down to me. Since then, the barrel battery leaked out onto the board, wrecked some of the traces. I hope to find another one. 
but I still have the rest of that machine, which is up on the shelf. It's the old Comtex. Oh, interesting. So that machine started all this. Look what you did. Oh, interesting. So this is like VGA capture. What could you possibly hope to do with this kind of stuff? Well, at least this one's got VR out. I mean, some of this stuff wasn't even good when it was new. Sound cards. How's that for a sound card? <laughs> Look at this thing. It's got a RAM slot on it. Old EWE32. Look at that. Gold Star. Didn't they become something else eventually? LG, that's right. Lucky okay. Gold Star. Nuts. So this is from 1995. So if you're complaining about how your, your you know, RTX whatever doesn't fit in your case and needs to be so big. So this is a modern graphics card. Yeah, it's a little bit on the thicker side, but in terms of the actual <laughs> length, Oh, is this Quadro 6000 work? Yeah, yeah, it does display. I haven't booted Windows up with it yet. Damn, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> Floppy and IDE, IDE cables. Yep. Oh no. Got a thermal paste rag in here. Got some random modular power supply cables. Yeah. Got some more ribbon that's, cables. Got that's, some overflow. That's the mix drawer. So there's actually some decent stuff in here. That's an HX1000. Yep. Piles upon piles of AMD coolers. This is like some socket. Holy crap, this is socket 462. So basically that's why you have three terabytes of space because this is all just like- Recycled drives. Recycled drives. And that's why you run RAID 1. Yes. Because this is all recycled drives. Exactly. What's this Fujitsu? 2.57 gigabytes. Oh, yes, no. my friends. Look. This is back when, you know, 100 or even 10 megs really counted. Check that out. Or this one. Seagate Metalist, 631 megs. So this is probably similar to the drive that was in my family's first computer. Yeah, so this is probably around the, the neighborhood of my family's like upgraded drive in our 386. So we talked about these actually in our Drive Savers video. They actually have a ton of old stuff like this lying around that is in working order because they never know when they're gonna get like a nuclear power plant or something that's still running hardware from this generation that's like, hey, our drive died, we need to get the data off of it. So I feel like there has to be a rhyme or reason to this. The very, very top is old, more, much more vintage. Socket seven, socket three. Sure. Wait, is Side this outboard new. cache? Yeah. Wow. It's coast module. So guys, cache didn't used to be integrated right next to the CPU. Instead, you had to actually install Cache. Now, the, the theoretical benefit of this is that if your CPU didn't have enough cash for your workload, theoretically, you could upgrade it with more cash down the line. Optical drives for days. I just purged a bunch too. Did you now? Yes. Couldn't tell. Got some of them iMac uh, power cables. Do these work? Uh, those ones I think have graphics issues, so I'm probably just going to salvage the drives and RAM out of them. And Bummer. That's the thing about all-in-one computers that's so uh, frustrating and wasteful, hey? Yep. As soon as they stop working, you can't even use them as a monitor. Although some of the older iMacs, I think you could, but not the newer ones anymore. Is that an EPC manual? Why would you even have, why would you care about, why would you keep this? Because I actually have one a friend gave me for Well, yeah, but you don't need the manual. It's just it, powering on your EPC. Install the battery pack, connect the AC power cord, turn yeah. on the EPC. I've never actually looked at the manual. Complicated. Ew. <laughs> Gross. No, no, don't look at that. Don't look at that. We're, we're done here. IO shields. shields for days. You know, I always keep these things just in case I ever encounter that board again or like find one that happens to have exactly the same layout. Yep. It has never once paid off. Oh my goodness. Cyrix CPUs and you got a whole shelf. Of the, why? These are worth more in gold than they are in functioning processor. Oh, that's a 133. A 133. Oh, with the integrated fan, huh? Yeah. Bet you could overclock the snot out of that thing. Athlon, Athlon XP era, very nice. One gigahertz K7. A lot of people don't know this, but AMD was actually the first to break the one gigahertz barrier. The more you know. Oh, socketed laptop chips. It's gonna be like Banyas Core, like early, early core series, I would guess, right? Uh, core two, I think. Oh, wow. A Gravis gamepad. Okay, now this had a really amazing feature for the time. You see this uh, threaded insert right here? So you could actually take this little winky joystick 
and you could screw it into it and then you could use it like a, like a, like more like an arcade stick and like a fight pad. <laughs> so a lot of you kids probably won't know this, but before there was a three and a half inch floppy, there was a five and a quarter inch floppy. Yes, my friends, I forget what the capacity of these was, but one thing is for sure, Adventure Math fit on at least two of them. Risk! Disc one of two, disc two of two! Oh man, there was a great Risk custom map for Supreme Commander that seems to have been lost to the bowels of the internet, unfortunately. Hey, if anyone out there is watching and you still have that old Supreme Commander Risk map, let me know, it was flippin' awesome. Okay, so I gotta know the stories behind at least a couple of these. So this one you were saying was your very first PC. Yep, that's the one that started it all. Oops. Now this is a classic right here. Turbo button. This really did make your computer go slower when it was activated. Common misconception. A lot of people think the turbo button was designed to make your computer turbo up when it was enabled. But actually, it was because computers were too fast for games and games used to have their physics tied to the clock speed of the CPU. So when CPUs got too fast, they needed a way to enable compatibility for these old poorly coded games. So you would press the turbo button and it would actually clock your computer down. So my parents, when I wasn't allowed to use the computer, used to lock it and our power button wouldn't work anymore. Little did they know I had a key for it as well, but. I, I haven't booted this up in years. I still need to fix the keyboard on it, but it did work is the last- Is this the compact portable PC? Yes, it is. Wow. No way. So guys, the way I could actually tell, not because I, I recognized it immediately, was just because I knew that it had a handle on it that looked just like this. So there you go, the entire back of it is the computer. There's your five and a quarter inch floppy drive. There's your, I don't know, what is this? Like a seven, eight inch CRT I, I monitor? I think it's an eight inch, it's green monochrome. And you've got a brightness dial. Yeah. And this is actually the plus model. It has a hard disk. Technically, they're right. It is portable. Okay, so to challenge Brian to prove that there's a use for this collection, I said, okay, find me a game I used to play. I wanna play me some Commander Keen right now. So he pulled down this 486, and this was what particular variant? Uh, this is a DX2, so clock doubled, 66 megahertz. I'm surprised you. EGA track. Look, I used this crap. Remember when the speaker was built into the computer? Oh, it is too. I don't know what the controls are. I thought it was space. That might be control or something. Oh. That, it looks like some ah! demented dog. What is this? What? I, I'm stuck. What the uh, crap? You, you need the key. Now our final piece of tech archaeology here is this. This is an AMD based laptop. Yeah, it's a K6-2-366. Holy crap. That display is horrible. Even with the pointer trails on or even without oh. them, you'd basically have point. Po pointer, pointer trails are off. Trails? That's not pointer oh. trails. Oh my goodness. It's horrible. Are you sure they're not on? Positive. Can I double check? You can double check I believe all you, you want. But can I double check? Oh wow, they're off. <laughs> what if we turn them on? <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. How far we've come. So imagine this. It's after midnight and someone's knocking on your door. Did you order pizza in your sleep again, or is it something a little bit more worrisome? Well, instead of getting out of bed, deciding whether it's worth taking the time to put clothes on or not, you can check who's there with the Ring doorbell camera kit. The Video Doorbell 2 has a motion sensing camera with adjustable sensitivity. It's 1080p with 160 degrees of vision, so it's nice and clear. It features two-way audio, so you can talk to whoever's at the door, and it's powered by either a battery or eight to 24 volt AC doorbell wiring so that you can use your existing wiring. 
and the Spotlight camera also features 1080 HD video, two-way talk, and LED lights, and this one also has a siren. So you can place it anywhere where you need a second set of eyes, like at your back door or inside your garage. So get some peace of mind with the Ring Doorbell Camera Kit. It's compatible with iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, and you can check it out today at the link in the video description. Massive thanks, Brian, for showing us your little tech museum here. Uh, it started out as Tech Hoarders and ended up with Tech Museum Hoarders Edition. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a comment below, get subscribed, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Want to say bye to YouTube? Bye-bye. You know, hi, Mom. No? No. <laughs> see ya.